Hello everybody, Gangster Granny, Chapter 4, let's make a start. Chapter 4 is called Mystery and Wonder. Ben wasn't at all sure that Raj was right about Granny. That night, it was the same old story. Granny served up cabbage soup, followed by cabbage pie, and for dessert, it was cabbage mousse. She even found some cabbage-flavoured after-dinner chocolates, somewhere. Cabbage flavored chocolates are not as nice as they sound, as they don't sound, and they don't sound that nice. After dinner, Granny and Ben sat down together on the musty sofa as they always did. Scrabble time, said Granny. Great, thought Ben. Tonight's going to be a million times more boring than last week. Ben detested Scrabble. If he had it his way, Ben would build a rocket and blast all the Scrabble boards in the world into outer space. Ben pulled Granny out, sorry, Granny pulled out the dusty old Scrabble box from the sideboard and set up the game on the, on the poof. Ben sighed. What seemed like decades later, but was probably just hours, Ben stared at his letters before scanning the board. He had already put down boring, ancient, quack, pointless, pongy, this one had to be checked from the dictionary, wrinkles, Cabbage sick, triple word score, escape, help, I hate this stupid game. Granny had a, disallowed this on account of it not being one word. He had an E, an M, an I, and a U and a D. Granny had just put down Murray Mint, double word score. So Ben used the T in the end to form the word tedium. Well, it's nearly eight o'clock, young man, announced Granny, looking at her little gold watch. Time for your Betty buys, I think. Ben groaned, ben groaned inwardly. Betty buys, he wasn't a toddler. But I don't have to go to bed until nine o'clock at home, he protested. And not until ten o'clock when I haven't got school in the morning. No, Ben, off you go to bed, please. The old lady could be quite firm when she wanted to be. And don't forget to brush your teeth. I'll be up soon to give you a bedtime story if you like. You always used to love a bedtime story. Later, Ben stood at the sink in the bathroom. It was a cold, damp room with no window. Some of the tiles had fallen off the wall. There was just one sad little frayed towel, towel and a very worn bar of soap that looked like it was half soap, half mould. Ben hated brushing his teeth, so he pretended to brush his teeth. Pretending to brush your teeth is simple. Don't tell your parents I told you, but if you want to try it for yourself, all you have to do is follow this step-by-step -step handy guide. 1. Turn on the cold tap. 2. Wet the toothbrush. 3. Squeeze a tiny amount of toothpaste onto your finger and place finger in mouth. 4. Move the trace of toothpaste around your mouth with your tongue. 5. Spit. 6. Turn off the tap. Oh, here we've got... Can we see it? Yep. Yeah. There's Ben's six steps. See, it's so easy. Nearly as easy as brushing your teeth. Ben looked at himself in the mirror. He was 11 years old, but shorter than he wanted to be. So he stood on his tiptoes for a moment. Ben was aching to be older. Only a few more years, he thought, and he would be taller and hairier and spottier and his Friday, no Friday nights would be very different. He wouldn't have to stay at boring old grannies anymore. Instead, Ben would be able to do all the thrilling things the older kids in the town did on Friday nights. Hang around with a gang of friends outside, the off-license... Sorry. Hang around with a gang of friends outside the off-license, waiting for someone to tell you off. Or alternatively sitting at the bus stop with some girls in tracksuits and chew gum and never actually get on the bus. Yes, a world of mystery and wonder awaited him. However, for now, even though it was still light outside and he could hear the boys in the nearby park playing football, it was time for Ben to go to sleep. In a hard little bed, in a damp little room, in his granny's run-down little bungalow. That smelled of cabbage. Not just a little bit, a lot. Sighing, Ben got under the covers. Just then, Granny gently opened the door to his bedroom. 
He quickly shut his eyes and pretended to be asleep. She lumbered over to the bed, and Ben could feel her standing over him for a moment. I was going to tell you that bedtime story, she whispered. The old lady had often told him stories when he was younger about pirates and smugglers and master criminals, but he was far too old for all that nonsense now. What a shame you're asleep already, she said. Well, I just wanted to say I love you. Good night, my little Benny. He hated being called Benny too, and little. The nightmare continued as Ben sensed his granny bending over to give him a kiss. The prickly old hairs on her chin bristled uncomfortably against his cheek. Then he heard the familiar, rhythmic quacking sound as her bum squeaked with every step. She squeaked her way back to the door and closed it behind her, sealing the smell in. That's it, thought Ben. I have to escape. It seems like that chapter was a bit shorter, but in any case, that's our chapter four. Thank you all for watching. You know the drill, you know the work. I'll see you next time.